Hi everybody, welcome. <laughs> Sorry, we're running a little late today. Uh, the MTA was not on our side. Um, and the good news is, is that the Paul Taylor Dance Company is back. Uh, we are rehearsing Mast in our space um, at the studios on the Lower East Side. The bad news is, is that sometimes we're rehearsing right up until three and sometimes it takes just a little bit more time for us to get home uh, once we're done with that. So Devin raced up to his house in Harlem and um, will be with us just shortly. But we are so excited to be back in um, our home and in our space. And uh, we have our first performance in Philadelphia next week, Thursday, it will be a live stream. Um, so definitely log on, it's at the Annenberg Center in Philadelphia. Um, we hope that you join us. Uh, he's here, he's ready to go. Silk, Devin. There he is. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> you look really fresh for running up all the way home. I mean, you know, I do what I can. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Which, my pup is here. Hello. Hi. What's your puppy's name for everybody <laughs> now? This is Onyx. Hi, Onyx. Onyx is a purebred Yorkie. She's crazy. Say hi. <laughs> Can I have a kiss? Thank you. Oh, right. the dog is so cute. I think, I think this exactly sums up you, Devin, is that like, <laughs> no matter what's going on, if Devin's like thrown into an understudy, if Devin's <laughs> new to something, gets thrown a crazy step, Devin will always be cool and calm and collected <laughs> and everything. So it's perfect. It's perfect. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, great. So Devin, yes. I read in your bio that you hail from the DC area. Yes, I do. I'm a Trinidadian. A uh, household raised DC boy, yeah. Nice. And you know that Paul was born and raised kind of around that same, he was like born in, um, I think he was born in Pennsylvania, but his mom was like just outside in Virginia, so. Yeah, yeah, I, I did, I did see that, yeah. Yeah, uh, how was that growing up in DC, the, the uh, nation's DC capital? It was, yeah. It was really good. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's extremely residential, it's very uh, slow compared to New York, but um, yeah, I wouldn't have traded it for the world. Like my formative years were at my um, performing arts high school, Duke Ellington School of the Arts. And um, yeah, that that's an experience I can't even describe in words, you know? Was was it at that school that you first started doing dance or had you been doing dance before you entered? Well, it, it was kind of on and off with me. Like I started with hip hop when I was uh, about seven or eight. Mm -hmm. I took my first ballet class when I was eight actually with, um, dance theater of Harlem they did a residency in DC mm -hmm. and I took that class and I was like I don't like it I hate it <laughs> and completely like disregarded that and did hip-hop and like jazz and like lyrical for like a long period of time and then I got back into ballet when I was 12 13 okay and I took my first modern class when I was 14 okay at my high school and, and was I, that what kind of modern was that uh, that was strictly Horton at oh. the time I mean, my, when I got into, yeah, right. Um, <laughs> when I got into my sophomore year, um, that's when uh, I got a different teacher and she started to like implement, um, you know, bits of Graham and mm -hmm. bits of like Lamone and stuff. So, um, so yeah, nice. that was the start for me. Yeah. Um, that's amazing. And so then what's the timeline? So like you graduated <laughs> from Duke Ellington yeah. And then I know that you went to the Pillow, and I also know that you went to the Ailey School. So, like, which one? All right, yeah, let's let's get the timeline. So, <laughs> okay, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I went to Duke Ellington School of the Arts from 2010 to 2014. Mm -hmm. Uh, did an Ailey intensive that summer. Okay. Uh, and then started with the Ailey School in 2015, and was there for two years, 2015, 2016. The summer of 2016, I did the Jacob's Pillow Summer Intensive. Right. And right after that, I joined uh, Ballet Spanicles Junior Company. And, you know, my, my career just kind of took off from there. So from like 19 up until now. Is, nice. Yeah. <laughs> how, was, how was the pillow experience? I, I remember this because like the pillow has that awesome tradition where in like the visiting company, they always like feature the alumni that have made it. And I yeah. know that you were like one of our ones. <laughs> and I was just like, Oh, Devin, you went to the pillow school. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm real low key about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, it was it was a great experience. Um, I think, I mean, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that was the first year they did three weeks. Okay. Of the intensive, uh, and that was just just before everything got um, renovated. That was before the okay. new studio. So I think we were the last group to do 
anything in like that old rickety like uneven floored studio are you guys just like sweating it out in the summer months oh my god well we I, we were dying for three weeks straight just dying just sweat blood sweat and tears just every single day and actually the second week ended up getting strep throat while i was there oh no so I, couldn't even, I couldn't even do one of the performances that was outside but oh I, it was the hardest most difficult most beautiful thing i've ever done in my life <laughs> And Milton Myers was running is running the program, right? Yeah, yeah, that's that's pops. I love Milton Myers. Yeah, yeah, master Horton teacher for those that oh, don't yeah. know. Oh, yeah. uh, amazing. And what was your like Ailey experience like? I mean, uh, my Ailey experience was great. Uh, yeah. I came in very very fresh. Uh, I didn't really know much about. Well, the only thing I knew about the Ailey was the Ailey company. Yeah. Um, but overall, I I, I came in very level headed. I tried to stay level headed throughout. Um, I was very much a, um, a student. Like, I was very, yeah. like, into the class student. Like, I didn't really deter away from what was going on. Like, for two yeah. years straight, I was very much indulged in everything that was in that building. And then when, um, you know, when I, I felt like it was time for me to go, I just decided to go. And yeah, their curriculum is amazing. Because, like, I feel like they just turn out, you know, it's like, obviously, the Horton is so, like, the epitome, but you also have such good gram teachers, such mm -hmm. amazing um, ballet teachers there. Yeah. Like, you know, you Absolutely. really get the fundamentals at that. Yeah, school. you get every single like. There's nothing you can't get out of that building. Uh, periodically, we have Bamon here and there. And actually, my first um, Taylor class was at the Ailey School. Oh yeah, who taught it? Yeah. Uh, Carolyn Adams taught it actually. Carolyn. Yeah, I um, subbed she... for her once um, <laughs> at the Ailey School, and I was just so like. Okay, everybody, legs are high, everybody's right. energy is so on point, you know, because everybody's good. Yeah, how is that? I mean, Carolyn is like, goddess. Yeah, um, uh, well, I mean, so it's 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 a little weird because I only took uh, her class that first summer of my intensive, that first summer intensive I went to. And uh, it was very short lived because I got into a repertory piece that summer. Okay. So as, as quickly as I was introduced to it, I, as quickly as I was taken out of it, I was like, oh, okay, like, this is great. Like a whole floor exercise, okay, this is nice, like, this is kind of yeah. sweet. And then yeah. I got into a rep piece and I was like, damn, well, that's it. <laughs> I was like, I'll see you when I see you. <laughs> Who knew it was gonna come back again? You right. know, circle back around. Who would have thought? <laughs> so you did Ballet Hispanico Second Company, but you also did a couple other um, like gigs, right? You did Metropolitan Operas. Um, yeah, I, I did the Met Opera for, uh, one ballet, I believe. One opera, okay. I should say. Yeah. Um, I danced with uh, Nimbus Dance Works in Jersey City. Yeah. Um, and I did a few like you know fashion week gigs here and there. Nice. But, um, but yeah, overall, um, I th yeah, I think it was just those three mainly. They just kind of yeah. all ran into the next. So. Yeah. And yeah. then, well, and then you joined Taylor, correct? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> I mean, and bless your heart, that audition was so you know, it's just like. <laughs> Or, like Paul passed away and then it's just like yeah. a week after it's like we got to hire two new women so yeah um but your energy was just so you know completely there in that space you know oh, and you. like Appreciate all that. of us were like in the front like, going like yeah uh-huh yeah you look great <laughs> with us <laughs> you know and you know and Michael who's just now like Michael Novak taking over mm -hmm. like uh yeah like that was a lot and I think you know, like they said, you were the first choice and he made, made a really good decision, so. Oh, thank you so much for that. Yeah, that warms my heart. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I thought I was thinking about it and, you know, I was just thinking of, um, you know, the first Lincoln Center that you did with us. Mm -hmm. For you, obviously, like, you've done so much rap, you look great in the ensemble pieces, but, like, there was just, there was two solos in there that like, to me, I was like, that defined for me, like, Devin's experience coming into the company. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's like, it's the throwback, right? It's like, we had the amazing Kyle Abraham um, create a piece, Love Lonely the Lonely on Us. Yeah. And then at the same time, we were bringing back a really old piece, um, uh, Post Meridian, of mm -hmm. which you got, like, for those that don't know, there is, you know, in the rep, there's tall guy parts and short guy parts. And we talked to Alex a little about his experience, but for mm -hmm. us tall men, James, yeah. um, <laughs> it's taking over the Paul parts that really like, that's when, you know, you're like, you're in the Taylor uh, yeah. grips of it. So um, actually that segues, I found this um, in our archive and it's one of Paul's choreographic notebooks. 
Well, this one was interesting because it's it, it's labeled PT Red Room Solo. And for those that don't know, originally the dance was called Red Room with a different set, mm -hmm. and then it was changed to for Post Meridian. And then it says Lech Demonstration, of which I think most of the Post Meridian stayed in like the company's lecture demonstration for a long time. But mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see. <laughs> double check this but like you can see paul's like you know <laughs> amazing like stick figures that he made yeah. in that thing those are all the shapes <laughs> uh, all, it's like it's all right there right yeah um but i guess i wanted to talk to you like what was your experience going into the post meridian solo first off um wow yeah great question uh i'm in the midst of me answering this my dog is chewing my hand um <laughs> uh going into that solo um it was it was slightly overwhelming um, right. because, you know, you know, only a handful of people had done that solo and like I learned straight from Paul's movement. Right. And it, it was, it was a lot. It was a lot, especially, especially like learning it off of a very old black and white video, trying to find all those details and nuances in it. Um, yeah, especially like learning it on my own and like going in and actually the first day I, like you know perform it in the studio uh i wasn't even supposed to perform in that day like we finished like the other group the rest of the group finished it early mm -hmm. and i was sitting on the side sweating doing nothing like i was sitting down just drenched and like Devin, you want to do it i was like yeah sure why not? <laughs> like, let's let's get it done and like yeah out the gate i was like okay just try not to panic breathe yeah usa and like it came out great it came out beautiful yeah. uh, apparently um... <laughs> i mean you know I think your first, like, it's like that Paul part that you get is yeah. always so special to you. And like, I'm thinking of like, I reconstructed Tracer, so I feel very mm -hmm. close to that solo. I know mm -hmm. um, Sean uh, Mahoney doing Scudorama, which yeah. was ha like a reconstruction. Like right. that first time you can like take on a part and really make it your own. And then for you being so new in the company, mm -hmm. it's like the first time that, it's not like Brandenburg's or somebody saying like, your arm needs to match that guy's arm. It's like right. nobody in the room knew as much as you did at that point right so like yeah. even betty was going like that kind of looks like what i remember but at the exactly. same time it's just like who knows but you look great you know exactly so, so. yeah they, they gave me a lot of freedom to do what felt right in that moment like what what made sense in my body at that time you know yeah and um yeah and even carolyn adams was there for one of the rehearsals and like at the end of it she was she looked at me and just said you know i feel like everything you're doing is something paul would have been like that looks great <laughs> yeah <laughs> i it. mean and that solo, especially because of where it comes in the dance, right? Like you're mm -hmm. the penultimate number right before the finale. And it's kind of yeah. like, it's one of those parts where you come in and you change the space of yeah. what we've seen. And, you know, like that entrance with you and that like purple <laughs> unitard, <laughs> like, but it completely like from what we'd seen before and the oddity of it, like you just brought it all back into view in mm -hmm. such an interesting way. And like dynamically, I was so just like captivated. So... I mean, it was amazing. Um, thank you, thank you. And then to watch you work with Kyle uh -huh. um, on another solo, like, it was so interesting to me because, like, I was, for those that, like, for the, for the process that we did, you know, yeah. Kyle basically recorded himself, you know, mm -hmm. dancing material um, to the songs that he wanted. And then he would kind of give you the material to look at and learn, yeah. and then he would shape it from there. Yeah. Um, but I thought like, wow, like even though we won't necessarily have Paul around to demonstrate for us with his own body, mm -hmm. what that is, you know, it's such a similar thing of like looking at such a specific person's way of moving and then trying to yeah. emulate it and adapt it onto our own. Um, talk about what it was like to work with Kyle. Cause I know that you and Kyle knew each other before the process happened. <laughs> so like you guys had a history going on to it, right? Uh, yeah, sort of, kind of. Um, I've met Kyle on <laughs> three separate occasions, I think. Uh, I'm not sure if he remembers me in all of them, but uh, I mean, because, you know, my hair has grown since he's seen me the first time. Right. Um, but the first time we met each other at uh, Jacob's Pillow, and he just came to visit and see what we were doing. And I saw him, and I fangirled, and I was like, I want to be a party company so bad. I just wanted to say that. Okay, bye. And, like, just peaced out. Yeah. Uh, and the second time, I saw him when he did a show at the kitchen i believe mm -hmm. uh i think it was dearest home yeah i think it was dearest home that sounds right something. yeah and uh and i saw him again after that and uh we kind of 
knew of each other, but like he'd never really seen me dance. So it was very much up in the air a lot of the time. But we were we were familiar with each other when he came to the studio. But like once he, you know, saw my movement, he was like, oh, yeah, didn't know. Okay, yeah. great. <laughs> It, yeah. But that that entire experience, it was it was interesting because a lot of the time, I'm not sure if most people know, but Kyle very much um, creates on himself, as you said, and then just kind of gives you what he's doing and like tries to like, and you have to decipher it through that. That typically has an assistant there to help him decipher his movement. Shout out to Kirati. Mm -hmm. um, but for a lot of the time, for Only the Lonely, I was kind of sitting down just like learning group parts and just kind of making sure everything was aesthetic. And I was like, all right, this kind of makes sense. Like, this is cool. And then one day, out of the blue, I, I was, like, sitting down, like, having lunch. And like, he came over. He was like, hey, Devin, can you, like, record me doing this thing? And I was like, yeah, sure, why not? Like, completely absent mind. I was like, yeah, 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 why not? Yeah, I got you. And I stood on the chair, recorded him do this whole thing. And, like, you know, Kyle, like, does, has his little isms and, like, has all these things. And I was like, okay. Like, I was, I was like, watching on the video. I was like, this is tight. Like, great. And as soon as he finished, he was like, okay, learn that. I was like, oh. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I got it. And it turned into what we put on Lincoln Center stage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it, and it looked amazing. Like, the the subtleties that he had in his body that you were talking about totally mm -hmm. were adapted into you um, in such Thank a so nice much. way. Um, yeah, no, normally that solo, I would be off stage crying, like, with tears. <laughs> I would just be like, it's just so beautiful. Because I remember watching you do it the first time, and, like, it's such a... It's like any, like the whole dance is in a way about loneliness or about misconnections yes. between people. But that solo yes. in particular, you know, it really like haunts thinking about, you know, that feeling in your gut. And it's so beautifully mm -hmm. through the fluidity of your body making that happen. Um, but, and maybe you could talk about this is like, you know, I think Paul's work there is a lot of fluidity to it, right? It's yes. like a very shape oriented. We have the V's, we have the scoops, but, you know, really, especially when you're taking on a Paul part, you know, mm -hmm. you really understand that like how liquid Paul was. And I'm wondering, yeah. like, did you, have you ever thought about like the connection between how Kyle moves with all that liquidity and what's going on as you were trying to find the shape in it? And then also how that, you know, translate into what you're doing with your back and mm -hmm. body for Paul's work. Um, yeah, there, there are very, very many similarities. Uh, for me, just my, my approach to dance um, as, you know, as an adult, I should say, as a working professional, uh, I always try to move as like cursive, if mm -hmm. you will. Mm -hmm. You know, like everything connects into the next thing until there's an intentional stop, you right. know? Uh, as opposed to like when I first started dancing, like when I was in high school, like people knew me as like someone who was like gonna punch it out every single time. Like, yeah. So to, uh, like grow up as grow as an artist and to like develop this sense of like you know softness like it's okay to be soft on stage and like still you know have this you can have this large presence by simply looking to the right you know what mm -hmm. I mean mm -hmm. um but as the two you know correlate um yeah very very similar in terms of fluidity uh I will say the post meridian solo um, the transitions were a little wonky. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I will absolutely say that. It, it was very much um, make one shape here, and then all of a sudden I'm in a back band and now I'm back to the floor. But trying to find the fluidity in that mm -hmm. is not impossible, you know? No. Uh, whereas Kyle, uh, there was a little more freedom to create the fluidity. Right. You know, there was, there was especially because um, and I'm in the studio working with him, and he, mm -hmm. it was very, it, it wasn't, very many notes he gave me every time we ran it. He was more so just like, I want to like clarify this little part and like right. let's tweak this part of it. But overall, it was very much, um, it was like water, like water falling off of a leaf, you know, just everything just kind of went into the next thing. Yeah. Amazing. I'm, yeah, I <laughs> can't wait until we bring back that piece um, to watch you do it again. Uh, it's so beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Um, for everybody tuned in, we would love to answer questions and I would love to ask Devin questions on your behalf. So please um, write in the comment section if you have anything anything to ask him. Um, yes, ask me everything. Ask him anything, um, <laughs> except for his number. We're not doing that on here, DMs. <laughs> um, or you could use like the little question box um, down there. I'm happy to do it. I was gonna ask you, um, 
if there was a dance, um, you know, as we've become PTAMD, we're bringing back repertory pieces. Or is there any dance that you're like, oh, I would love for the Taylor Company to take that on? In the Taylor Rep or just in general? Not even in the Taylor Rep, just like any like dance that you're like, oh, that could be really, like, really interesting to like bring and set on us. Hmm. Yeah, I never really thought of it. I, personally, within the rep, I would love to do Brandenburg's again. Yeah. <laughs> love Brandenburg's. Like, that was one of the first ones that... And so far, you've only performed it at the Bach Festival. Which, yeah, on, like, you know, no, on a matchbox. No offense against <laughs> Manhattan School of Music, but it is a fairly small stage. It was really, really small. And, like, you know, me being a jumper, you yeah. know, um, I, I would love to get on Lincoln Center stage and just fly across right. the stage in two jumps, you know? <laughs> totally, totally. But outside of that, and I haven't really put too much thought of it, um, yeah. thought into it. Um, personally, I would love to see a like Annabelle Lopez or Choa piece. Oh, from the company. I mean, she she had made Annabelle. some stuff for um, Ballet Hispanico, correct? Uh, yeah, like once I left Pillow and joined the second company, she was already there choreographing things. But everything that I've done from when I was at Pillow and then I saw at Ballet Hispanico and everything she's done throughout, I feel like we would look pretty great doing her stuff. Nice. Uh, somebody want to know where you're from again. He's from the D.C. area. <laughs> that was my brother who said that. Yeah, I'm, I'm from really? D.C. Yeah, Trinidadian <laughs> household. But yeah, I'm from D.C. Um, amazing. Uh, what's your, like, pre-show routine? Just for me to know. Because <laughs> I want to know. pre-show routine. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's funny you say that because I, I get a lot of flack for what I do before shows. Typically, I take a nap <laughs> okay. before the show uh, just to, like, get my head right. Um, and honestly, I, I try to, uh, warm up as much as possible, you know, within like the time frame we have, like I do a couple of plays, a couple of tondus, yeah. uh, I meditate a bit, drink maybe two cups of water. I don't really put on makeup. I just try to drink a whole lot of water from the night before. <laughs> right. Right. And I just kind of, you know, this is just what I look like. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, um, yeah, just try to get focused. Like depending on the piece, I try to. Do I try to do a lot of like character building before getting into the um, dressing room before a piece. Uh, so like for example with Piazzolla, like I'm very fam familiar with like flamenco pieces and like mm -hmm. flamenco dance. So I try to study that, and then just before the curtain goes up, I try to get into this mode of like long spine and like totally. I'm ready for this, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty I, much it. I hope. And I that's a similar that. kind of question. <laughs> Somebody was wondering like, where do you get your spiritual motivation, inspiration? from before you step into any piece. So it sounds like you do like a quite like a fair amount of like, you know, research or just connections between like, you know, what you know versus going yeah, into absolutely. something. Absolutely. Um it really it really depends on the piece. Um for example, like with Syzygy, I knew um that it was a little it was a looser based piece, uh as far as like what I was as far as what I've done in the company so far. Right. Um but how however, like with the soul of that I start with everything is very intentional even though it is loose every step is intentional so for that piece and for also post meridian i studied big cats mm -hmm. i studied big cats and i studied particularly like leopards and lions because they're solitary and that's kind of how i am as a person like i studied just like their intent behind like every step that they take and like they're going after something like how are they maneuvering each part of their body so they can be as quiet as possible in order to attack whatever they're attacking you know and um yeah, just it really just depends on whatever piece it is. You know, like with Brandenburg, I just thought jump high and be happy. You know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, always a good a good note to have. Right. Um, somebody wanted to know, like, where where did you think that you had like your greatest development in um in your schooling to get you to this like talent level? Like, where did you like? Was there a certain time that like maybe like it just flipped that Oprah aha moment, as they say? Um, definitely in high school. Um, my high school modern teacher, Catherine Smith, she, uh, she, a great teacher, so a dog of a teacher. Like, mm -hmm. uh, she was amazing. Like, she was very much someone who would scream at you if you, like, looked the wrong way when she was giving you a correction. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. I love her as a teacher. But, uh, there was a moment when I first started, like, with modern that the center floor work made sense and, like, transitions and everything made sense. And I got used to her routine. And then as soon as we started to go across the floor, there would be a disconnect. Mm. it'll be very much a disconnect and I was like 16 at the time uh and she and one day she pulled me to the side she's like I'm not sure what's happening because like everything is there mm -hmm. but we have to bridge the gap for whatever reason 
And I was like, okay, cool. And like one day uh, she saw me like rehearsing, like our school at day ended at five o'clock and I was rehearsing myself from five until like seven. Right. And she just sat in the office and just waited for me to finish. She was just watching from the window and just like, okay. And like, as soon as I packed it up and decided to leave, she said a couple of things that, that escaped me at the time, but she said a couple of things. And like, from that moment on, it just, it clicked. I'm not mm -hmm. sure what it was. Everything just clicked. Like the undercurve of modern dance clicked. And then like the overcurve of ballet clicked. Like everything after that. Mm -hmm. uh, also probably her like, you know, stabbed me in the back of the head as many times as she did. <laughs> probably knocked something in, in place. So <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. sometimes oh, yeah. it takes a little bit of a slap to make us go into it. Um, uh, noted Taylor alumni, Francisco Graciano wants to know, what's your dream Taylor role? Ooh, my dream Taylor role. Um, honestly, I've done it. It was Syzygy. Um, yeah. Because I, I wasn't very, like I said, before coming into the company, I wasn't very familiar with any of the rep. But yeah. Yeah. I, that was one of the pieces that someone told me to just sit and look at. I mm -hmm. think Novak told me to sit and watch that piece. And I sat down and watched it. And I was like, yo, I was like, whoever this man is in the front, like, I got I got to do that. <laughs> awesome. I have to do that part, like jump over stuff and like roll on the floor and like break my back a few times. I have <laughs> to do this part. And one day we got casting and it was me and I was like, oh, well, we did it. <laughs> Check. We're done. We're out. Right? I was like, cool. I can, I can retire. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, somebody was asking, like, where do you see yourself in the future, maybe? And, like, maybe this is too early to say. I mean, you're fresh to the company. But, like, do you think that, like, teaching is in your future? Do you see yourself doing other things? I know you're really into fashion. Um, yes, very much into fashion. Um. In the future, I don't know. I can see myself doing a multitude of things. Uh, I, I don't see myself as a jack of one trade. You know, mm. I'm, I'm a master of none. You know, yeah. Uh, I I have taught before coming here. I, I enjoy teaching uh, yeah. periodically. I can't say I would love to do it all the time, uh, but I can I can see myself teaching in the future. I would love to work as a designer for some brand. Whoever wants to take me on, I will gladly work as a designer. For any people, I would uh, I would like to make jewelry at some point yeah. in my life. Like, there's a bunch of things I would like to do. Have you ever thought about connecting like your passion for fashion <laughs> and uh, <laughs> dance? Maybe like designing for choreographers at all? Um, it's crossed my mind. Uh, yeah, I have I haven't really, um, you know, met the right people, I guess, to create dance wear. Sorry, my dog is crying in the background. Um, yeah, I haven't really connected with the right people to make dance wear, but like, uh -huh. don't put it past me. I've absolutely drawn out sketches before, so. Totally. Yeah. Cool. We'd love to see it. If there are anybody choreographers or people that want to like finance him making clothes <laughs> for us, you know, shout out, right. write the DMs. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it for today. Uh, I want to thank Devin so much for making the time and talking to us and sharing his story um which is beautiful cannot wait to see where you go so happy to be back dancing on stage with you um of course. <laughs> yeah and uh yeah so we'll be back in two weeks for more talking taylor and uh if you have any more questions feel free to reach out to the company to me to Devin, and we're happy to be here uh so yeah everybody be well be blessed thank Thanks, you all Devin. thank you bye see you guys <laughs>